Within the past few months, I recorded a lot of videos for Cloud or Not. And this resulted with huge amounts of data, about 1TB, piling up on my external disk. So my goal was to upload that data to S3 and archive it there. Turns out, my internet connectivity is so slow that it takes me days or even weeks to do so. So I needed a better solution for that. And here it is. This is an AWS snow cone device, which I will use to transfer the data from my external disk to my S3 bucket. The first step is to create an import job. To do so, let's jump over to the AWS management console. Here I'm searching for the AWS snow family service. Before proceeding, I double check the region for the import job and this is Ireland, uh, which is fine. So I'm, I'm going on. So let's create the job. There are a few options here. Um, I choose import into Amazon S3 because yeah, that's what I'm up for here. Then I have to acknowledge that I've been reading the documentation. <laughs> so I've been doing that before. <laughs> so I'm skipping this step. Next, I need to provide the shipping address. So let's do so. And I'm selecting the shipping speed. I don't need express, standard is fine. I can wait a few days. Next, I need to specify a name for the import job. So let's do cloud on out demo here. And then um, I'm choosing the snow device. There are a bunch of options here. I will talk about them later. I'm choosing the smallest one, which is a terabyte of storage and also the cheapest option here. Okay, let's proceed. Next, I need to acknowledge that I will bring my own power supply. So I will need an USB-C power supply. I have that, that's fine. And I enable the wireless option on my snow cone device. So wireless network, network connectivity. Then I configure the target for my import job. So I select the S3 bucket that I want to transfer all the data to. I created that bucket already. It's called Widix Snow Inbox. Okay. And the other options here are not interesting for my use case. So I don't need any compute on the instance. I don't need IoT, Greengrass. I don't need remote device management. So just let's skip those things. Now, AWS asks about the security preferences of our import job. We have to specify a key used for encrypting the data. I'm keeping the default KMS key here. And then also the Snow family service needs an IAM role to be able to access S3. So this will be created automatically in the background. I'm fine with that. So let's continue. To make sure you're getting notified about changes of your import job, for example, when the device has been shipped to you and stuff like that, you specify an SNS topic. Uh, so let's do that. I call it Cloud on Out demo and I will provide my email address here. Okay, so that's it. And then uh, we're getting everything for a review. So I'm going over that, looks fine and I'm creating the job. After a few days, UPS delivered the snow cone device in my case, and it's now time to plug it in. So to do so, let's open it up. And first we need um, power supply. So you need to bring your own USB-C power supply here. So let's do that. And uh, as soon as you've connected it to the power, the whole thing wakes up and boots up the snow cone device. And um, besides power, we need an ethernet connection. So I'm plugging that in here as well. Uh, and that's all we need. The snow cone device says it is still locked. So what we need to do is we need to unlock the device. And I'm jumping back to the um, AWS management console and open the snow import job here. Scroll to the bottom and here I find two things. The unlock code, which I will copy to my clipboard and uh, I can download a manifest file. I'll do so. Besides that, I need the so-called Ops Hub software. 
and I will download that from the AWS website. So I'm using the one for macOS. I open the Ops Hub software. Then I choose Sign into Local Devices. Uh, I choose Snow Cone as the device type. And then I have to provide the IP address of the device. And that's what the Snow Cone shows on the display. So I'm typing that in. This is 192.168.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
and uh, there is another one with a 14 terabyte SSD. And the costs are around uh, $60 uh, per job for the HDD one and about $150 for the SSD. Um, the prices vary um, uh, in the different regions and uh, there's shipping costs uh, on top of that as well. And besides the snow cone, there is the snowball device, uh, which is quite larger in, in contrast. It's about the size of a workstation. Um, it comes um, with 10, 25 or 100 gigabyte network connectivity. It ships with power cables, um, that's a difference. And there are two versions available. Uh, so one is um, the storage optimized one, which comes with 80 terabyte. <laughs> and um, there is the uh, compute optimized, which comes with 28 uh, terabyte uh, included. And what's uh, special about those devices is they come with compute capacity as well. So you can run something like an EC2 instance on those devices. Um, so the compute optimized comes even with a GPU, which you can have optional here. And yeah, it comes with 104 uh, vCPUs and 416 gigabyte of memory. And uh, of course, that's also, <laughs> um, you can see that in the costs as well. So um, the cheapest snowball device is around $300 per job and the most expensive one is about $2,000 uh, per job. Okay, yeah, so that's an overview uh, of the snow family. And by the way, if you even want to go bigger, there's the snow mobile as well, <laughs> which is basically a truck. Uh, I think uh, this is really, really for very, very rare cases, but uh, just to let you know. As we were talking a lot about S3 in this video, I want to mention a product that I'm building together with Michael called Bucket AV. Bucket AV is an antivirus solution for Amazon S3. You can use it to either scan objects immediately after they have been uploaded or to schedule regular scans, for example, every week. Bucket AV helps you to ensure that you're not storing malware on your S3 buckets, which is especially important if you have user-generated content or third parties that are uploading files into your S3 buckets. So check out Bucket AV to protect your S3 buckets. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. Um, see you next time.